everybody, Teddy Baldessar here. So we are in Pennsylvania right now in Lancaster. Behind me, we have a place called RGM. So if you've not heard of this place, this is a pretty awesome thing that's going on inside of here. So probably some of the most complex watches made in America taking place inside of these doors. We're actually gonna be walking through it, meeting with the founder, Roland, and getting basically a lay of the land and what they do. So let's head inside, take a closer look. All right guys, we're inside here, RGM, with Roland himself. Roland, pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having us today. Pleasure to meet you. Glad you could come and see us. So for people that are watching, because I mean, there's people that watch pretty much all over the world and maybe they're not familiar with RGM. As far as I know, I don't know anybody else in America that is doing the things that you are doing at the level that you're doing it. So do you mind introducing people to the brand a little bit, telling your backstory? I think that would be a great place to start. Sure. Uh, RGM started in 1992. Uh, we've been in business uh, the whole time, watches. One thing that we have always prided ourselves in doing is making quality watches and not faking anything. So it's been always important to, to me that if we, like the guilloche has to be guilloche, hand cut, it can't be stamped. All mechanical watches, we don't make any quartz watches. As far as I know, we're the only company here, as you said, you know, doing all the things that we're doing. So we're making some cases here. We make three different movements. We also are making dials. Uh, we do our own guilloche. You can see the, uh, <laughs> the rose engines uh, here behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a unique uh, little niche company uh, here in America. To find things going on here, uh, you'd have to go to Europe, really, to, to find a few small makers there. So the big news right. is, I think for you especially, and just for people that are watching, is the fact that you are is making your own movements, which mm -hmm. I think is, of course, very impressive and think, you know, gets thrown around, around a lot pretty yep. loosely in the industry, but what that really means to be able to do that here, could you talk about that trek of getting into your 801 and your different calibers sure. and things you produce? It's, it, was a, it was a long road, you know, it's a, it's a, it's yeah, a, it's a tough hill to climb. Um, the idea first came into my head uh, to have uh, some watches with our own movements around two, 2000. Because uh, at that point, everything we made had a Swiss movement. And we still make some watches with, uh, with Swiss movements. But I knew we needed to have an in-house movement. Uh, not because any other reason than I wanted it. You know, as a watchmaker, that's, I felt I needed that. So um, from 2000, we didn't sell the first watch with an 801 in-house movement until 2007. Wow. So it was seven years of working on that project and, and uh, prototyping and changing things and, uh, and, and those movements were very nice movements in 2007, but the 801 we make today is far superior than the one that we, that we first made. Uh, so that's a very long road. So we are making about 90% of the movement uh, here in the U.S. Some parts are still Swiss parts. We're buying um, the escapement and the balance. Uh, complete, uh, also jewels, ma mainspring, things like that are, are coming from Main plate, from, uh, bridges, everything like that bridges. is produced here though. Yes, and we'll show you that here shortly. We'll go back here and check out some engine turning. Uh, Adam right. is uh, working on a dial now. Um, engine turning is how we would say it in, in English. Mm -hmm. in, in French, it's guilloche. Mm -hmm. The machine itself, this is a, a round machine, a turning, so this would be a rose engine a guilloche machine or an engine turning machine. We also have a straight line machine over in the corner where we can do verticals and horizontals and uh, star patterns and things like, like, like that. Can you talk about sourcing these machines? Because these are things you don't, do not see everywhere. You don't see, honestly, even, no. the art form, even the art form even taking place that often. I don't think many people even understand what is actually happening. So can you even talk through what is, the, what is actually happening here? And so people that I, maybe have no idea. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the machines are hard to find. Yeah. Um, this particular machine he's working on right now is a plant. It was made in England. This is probably, this machine might be 1930s. It's, it's a little bit uh, later than the machine that are behind it. Um, basically, it's a type of lathe but the headstock can move. And we have rosettes on the headstock. And then there is a metal uh, piece that is sticking out uh, that will touch that rosette and can make that head move. So basically the head is following um, that shape of the rosette. The cutter uh, is stationary and the dial in, that's in the chuck in the front is actually what's moving and the cutter is stationary. Mm. You can affect the pattern by the rosette, by spacing, by many things, by even uh, offsetting. So there's many different things that will affect the pattern. So it's, it's an endless uh, amount of patterns you could come up with. But we will mainly do uh, a number of ones that we know are, are, are quite uh, 
uh, famous or people like a lot, but occasionally we will experiment too. And I also noticed some people working on some other things around us. I mean, you do a lot of servicing as well, so yes. outside of just your own yep. stuff. So what are you doing in that yep. department? We, we do a lot of repair and restoration work. Okay. So we can do vintage, antique, complicated, modern mechanical watches. But then we also act as a service center for some smaller brands out of Germany and Switzerland. Service is a large part of our business, so I'd say it's almost a 50-50, you know, between uh, what we service and what we make. So somebody would say that you're probably crazy to want to even make your own movement. I mean, you said, it sounded like almost like a personal journey for you to want to oh, make yes. this happen. Um, could you talk a little bit more about just the challenges with that? Because I don't know if people really understand what actually goes into doing this because people say hey why doesn't a brand just make their own in-house movement and don't think about the economics of it the challenges that are there i mean could you really talk about that and what you had to go through to really do that well i i, I can and there's a big difference between like a handmade movement true you're doing and, some true and, bespoke and, stuff and industrialized movement yeah. so you know we it's we're limited to how many of these we can make because they're basically hand built hand adjusted uh, it's not like going to ETA or a factory like that where it's so uh, mechanized and industrialized that they can just pump out that mm -hmm. same part over and over and over. Uh, so these are truly hand built. So it's a much slower process, but it, it adds to the appeal because you know each, each movement is, is slightly, you know, there's little differences, uh, uh, but it's, it's a hand built product. It, it, there's, there's soul in it, there's life in it, you know. For production, um, what do we, I mean, per year for your actual stuff that you're producing, your 801s, your 20s, and say your turbines? I mean, a maximum for the 801 would be somewhere between probably 50 and 60 movements. So it's, okay. it's a very small. Very limited number uh, talking. Turbion, it all depends on orders. You know, some, some years we could make one or two, other years we may not make any. You know, and turbion, 20, we forgot you know, to mention at yeah. the beginning, but you're making turbions Yes, here. we have a turbion, <laughs> uh, our Pennsylvania turbion uh, is the only turbion that's ever been made in America in a series. There's been a few other guys that made like one watch or made another, but that's the only one that's been made in a series. And it's not somebody else's tourbillon that we put in a plate or whatever. We actually make uh, the cage uh, and the tourbillon components here in the building, which mm -hmm. we, can, we can show you some of those parts yeah, later. Maybe. Okay, so I know that you do a lot of the you know, development of your own main plates and bridges and things like mm -hmm. that. Do you mind if we take a look at that as well? Yeah, let's let's go down the basement and okay. I'll show you how we make this. Let's do it. All right, so now we're downstairs. So Roland, mm -hmm. can you just explain where we're at, what we do in this room uh, a little bit more? Absolutely. Uh, in this room, we do a number of things. One, we do a CNC machining behind us, which we'll show you shortly. Uh, on this bench over here, uh, we have a number of small machines. We do different operations, and I can explain each, each one of those. The first okay. machine here uh, is where we do the Cote de Genève lines. Uh, what he's doing is a series of circular lines on top of this 801 barrel bridge. So we're decorating the top surface of that bridge. So he's going to take it down until he gets a perfect finish, um, and then we'll know that, that we're deep enough for that line, and then he can move the machine a little bit move the part on the machine, and then do, do the next line. That's what he's doing here. He's moving it over, start another line. Okay, so now we're doing some prolonge here, so different yeah. process, but I would imagine same way of going about it in terms of you know, your setting, independently going to each different part and going about it. Yep, so what he's doing here, he's also doing a barrel bridge, and we're doing the underside. So a perlage, or purling, as it's sometimes called, uh, gives you that brilliant little, little, little pearl, so it looks like on the movement. Um, we finish under our bridges where only the watchmaker sees, <laughs> uh, but we also do uh, the main plate, uh, which, uh, which uh, parts of that can be seen uh, through the back of the watch. Uh, so it's a, it's a very uh, traditional decoration for uh, high grade watchmaking. Seeing a traditional polishing machine of like a case, for example, like in a lot of ways, I mean, you're same kind of motion, but how is this machine different and specialized for doing these kind of finer pieces of the actual watch. Well, the, the trick here isn't really the machine, it's the discs that are on the machine. Mm. So we have a series of shaped discs here, some uh, in fiber, uh, and sometimes wood is used. And we have a special made tool. So there's a special made tool in that pen vise that holds just that shaped bridge. That way he can get to all the little locations that you need to get to and firmly hold it. And what he's working on is he's working on that outside bevel now on, on that bridge right there so we can get a nice polish on the outside of, of that bridge uh, um, right along the, the, the edge. So we want to have a nice 
a nice mirror finish polish along the edge of the bridge and, and that's what the Anglosh is. But these machines were making uh, many parts from uh, a main plate, uh, bridges, um, setting parts, wheel blanks, uh, even dial blanks, hmm. um, and, and many more. That's just to name, name a, a, f a few. So here we, we just have a basic a piece of uh, German silver, or we would call it nickel silver also, okay. um, which is going to be made into a main plate for a caliber 801. So what we're doing in the machine here today is we are cutting the front side of the main plate. And just so people are watching, understand, most people are not doing this, you know, especially when no, uh, they're not making I, you know, their own main plates no, and bridges. This, no, does, this no, doesn't that's, happen. That's, that's, uh, that's not something you would commonly find, uh, um, especially uh, in, uh, in, in this country. So uh, uh, it is something that uh, we pride ourselves on doing though. We can check the work that we're doing on the CNC perfectly with the uh, CAD file that we have. So this machine and its software will help us overlay an image of the CAD over the part we just made. So we can actually check the dimensions, the location of holes, uh, recesses. Um, so that way we can be sure um, if the part is good or not. So and then from there, you're going to make adjustments tell you tell everything is just right. From the actuals to you know what right. you need it to be. Exactly. All right, Roland, so we basically went through a lot of your process. Yeah. I think now it would be good to just actually look at some of your pieces. So can you kind of walk us through some of them and sure. uh, for some highlights here? Uh, I'd probably start with uh, the uh, PS801E, um, which is uh, a classic RGM with uh, 801 movement, a full guilloché dial, which we, we've seen a lot of that demonst demonstrated here today. This has the blued steel keystone hands, which are the only ones uh, yeah. using that. Um, uh, fluted case, so the case is made here in Pennsylvania. 90% of the movement is made here, and we make the guilloché dial here. So Stunning. it is uh, really the most American-made watch that you can buy uh, today, mechanical watch. Wow. Uh, next, I would move on maybe to the uh, uh, the caliber 20, uh, which is our has our shaped movement, has a motor barrel, precise moon, and seconds on a disc. Uh, Second on the disc is pretty cool. One, one of my uh, favorites. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, certainly a very special watch. Also in-house movement, caliber 20. Here we have the tourbillon in uh, gold. Um, so the Pennsylvania tourbillon is available in uh, rose gold or uh, stainless steel. Uh, we make the cage here in Pennsylvania. We make the uh, uh, movement. Uh, another watch that is more than 90% made here. It's not using somebody else's tourbillon parts built into it. No, this, this tourbillon is built here, here. Uh, in the building, actually. So That's an incredible uh, very, very, very special watch. It's, it's the uh, first tourbillon made in America in a series. And then another interesting watch is our um, skeleton, the um, uh, Pennsylvania series uh, 801 and skeleton. Here you can see through the entire watch. Uh, quite, a, quite a fun watch. It also has a three-arm second hand. So you're only reading the seconds at the bottom of the dial. That way it, it leaves the, the center open um, because with a skeleton, that's the point. You want to be able to, to see through the watch. Absolutely beautiful. And then you also do, of course, some more entry level stuff as well. So we these do. are all you know, your, your movements that you're yep. using here. And then you also have some ETA stuff that you're using. Yeah, there's a couple of things I can show you. One, one of them that's quite interesting is our new This is um, beautiful. This model, looks great. Model I saw 600. a picture of this. Yeah, this is the model 600. Um, this is a chronograph. Um, that is uh, with the first RGM with a raised box sapphire crystal. Mm. And uh, this watch really is inspired by some of those military and pilot chronographs from the 1960s and into the early 70s. A very nice watch. Another one is the, uh, uh, the Model 500, um, which is uh, really a true sport watch, GMT. Um, you have a bi-directional uh, bezel. Um, it has a screw down crown fluted case also on the side, so it's a very nice uh, sport watch. And then, of course, uh, a lot of people are familiar with the model that's been in, in our line a long time, is the Model 300 uh, Professional Diver. Uh, still a very good uh, seller for us, and it is a true professional diver. We have uh, um, uh, underwater cinematographers using this. We have uh, people uh, who dive on um, uh, oil rigs and things like, like that, so it's, uh, it's a tested uh, uh, model. 
Roland, I really want to thank you again for allowing us to come in here. It's been an absolute treat to do it. This has been on my personal list to come in here. I don't know why it's taken so long to do it, but uh, thank you for just being an open book. And sure. I there's it's definitely people watching that I think will enjoy it as well. Yeah. Uh, how can people find you? So, I mean, in terms of like looking at your pieces and just reaching out to you, I mean, you have your website and everything sure. like that, but I definitely want people to know where to go to. Uh, well, know, I mean, the best place is, is the website, uh, yeah. rgmwatches.com. Okay. Um, certainly, you can uh, see uh, what we do there and see our models. Uh, you, we have a custom page. Another thing we didn't talk about, we also do a lot of custom watches for individuals or for small companies, things like that. So One somebody, of ones and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you have an, an, you know, we can customize a model we have or make something entirely new. And uh, two, we appreciate you guys coming and it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. All right, guys. Well, if you did enjoy this video again, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Also, if you want to see more of this content, how this is all made possible, TeddyBaldestar.com. We fund all of these just different productions and traveling. So uh, full authorized dealer of over 25 brands. Check it out. Full AD of everything that we carry. Factory warranty. So you're completely covered. And also definitely check out RGM. I love what these guys are doing. What they're doing here is truly one of a kind in America. And I, Roland, I think, just a really good guy from everything I could tell. And uh, he truly loves what he does. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.